Well, hey, everybody. Welcome to the very first Epi. Can we call it Epi? I think we're going to call it Epi because we're <laughs> Canadian. I this like. Is the first, this is the first <laughs> Epi of a little project I'm doing with some, uh, not I, we're doing as friends called The After Show. So welcome. Uh, on the weekend, we started on Sunday, we started a brand new series and kind of a, a campaign uh, that we're doing for the summer. We're trying to keep people engaged through this whole virus and pandemic and we're you know stuck at home we can't be together so one of the things we've done is try to get the book out faith for exiles and we're just talking about what it means to be resilient disciples and i'm really excited to have uh, some friends here we're just going to take each week and dissect some of the teaching not just the teaching the ideas and share our thoughts and what we're feeling do, do we buy it is it is it legit uh, and share maybe even some of our own personal experiences but i gotta say this kev i gotta say this we were podcasting. I don't know if you remember this. So Kevin and I have known each other forever. We were podcasting before podcasting was ever a thing or even cool. Do you remember this? Oh, yeah. The EMG fan show. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my yeah. goodness. You know. So we did this thing. <laughs> we did this thing called the EMG fan show. And legit, pod podcasting wasn't a thing. This was probably in 2004. And we would call people on the church phone and put them on speakerphone and record them. And it was part of our youth group that we were kind of leading. <laughs> and the way we did announcements is we would do announcements through audio. And we would call people on the speakerphone and talk to them. And then we'd do announcements. And we would put it as MP3 files on this thing called the internet. And kids would hit it and listen. I don't, I don't think anybody really listened to it. <laughs> <laughs> listen to it. And then years, years later, this thing podcasting comes and there you go. We were podcasting before podcasting was cool. So I feel really good about that. I can't believe you remember that. Oh yeah, of course I do. Yeah. We, we call people all the time. So by the way too, it's Kev's birthday today. Oh, it is, yeah. how, old are <laughs> how old are you buddy? 32. 32. Ooh, 32. Wow. Nice. nice. <laughs> well, well, happy birthday. Yesterday was Canada Day, and here we are the first week of July. It's, uh, it's lots of fun. Now, I'll also say this. We had planned to call this the after party. Originally, we had planned to call this the after party, and so I sent that out, and we even did some promo. And then we realized, and I had no idea, that another church, an awesome church, at the Meeting House Church in Oakville, does a thing called the after party after some of their uh, um, teachings and messages. I had no idea we were set, so we're, we're <laughs> calling this, we're going to call this the, uh, the after show. And the, one of the reasons why this kind of emerged is because Kathy and I were talking a while ago. What, um, what we wanted to do is we wanted to do a book club, maybe a podcast online. And then with COVID and all this, we thought, let's do Faith for Exiles. Let's call it the after show. So let's go around the horn. Tell us who you are. Kit, Kev, Kathy, who are you really? Cool. Tell us deep down in your soul. <laughs> go ahead, birthday boy. Yeah. Um, Long walks on the I beach. Love, yeah. I don't, I, don't know, <laughs> I don't know where we start, but um, yeah. Are you, are you two married? Uh, say. We are, yeah, I guess so, yeah. Yeah, we, we are married. Uh, we just celebrated our five-year anniversary a month ago. Ooh, nice. Um, yeah, five years together. And June what? Because I was there. I, I remember I was May there. May 30th. Oh, May 30th, close. yes. So close, cool. yeah, yeah. Cool. Um, what's your anniversary, Drew? June 30th, so a couple days ago. <laughs> it was amazing. <laughs> Yeah, June and my and my daughter's birthday is July thirty first. I get them messed up, but this is about you. Can continue, that's continue. A, yeah, that's that's why I was trying to catch you. I thought maybe you'd uh, you'd mess those up. Beef right. it up all the time. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. What do what do we that's what it. do we want to know? That's not all I am. No, right? <laughs> um, I guess I work for TD. Um, I love sports, movies, the whole thing. It sounds like a dating profile, kind of, but uh, but we're, but we're married, so. <laughs> Um, Tell us how you met. How did you guys meet? Funny, uh, I mean, at EMG. So, oh, so the yeah, EMG yeah. way back, back in the day. In the day. Yeah. yeah, she that actually was, she was, she was one of the only ones that listened mm -hmm. to the EMG fan show. Yeah, it was that MP3 that got to me. Did you, did you honestly <laughs> listen? Did you listen? No, I, mean, I, don't, I don't know. I don't remember the podcast. I remember the videos. The, all the videos I remember that you guys met at EMG. I wasn't there, but I remember you guys talking about it some years and years ago. We were yes. sitting at, at somebody in somebody's basement, and then we we're talking about how we all met each other. And uh, I remember you guys talking about that. Yeah, it's been a while. So here we are. Fantastic. <laughs> Kendra, who are you really? Who are you, Kendra? Who's Kathy? <laughs> oh yeah, did you, I guess. Oh, yeah, sorry. 
I, I, I moved on. Kathy, Kathy, who are you really? Sorry, I moved on from you. I, no, it's fine. This is a hard question. Um, I mean, I work um, the account right for the Wolf Performance Hall, so Praxis is familiar with the Wolf back when they were City View. Yep. You were City View. Um, yeah, so I do events there, which is a great segue to Kendra. Kendra, to you. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> we're really good at this. Kendra, who are you uh, I, really? I'm Kendra. Uh, and I love events. And I also do events at Fanshawe College. And also a lot of marketing, which is super fun. I'm also hungry most of the time. <laughs> like, if I'm not otherwise occupied, I'm, I'm probably thinking about my next meal. Nice. So, <laughs> I, like I feel that. like that's an important thing to know. Sweet. Me. <laughs> awesome. Where did you grow up? Where did you grow up, Kendra? Just outside London, right? Yeah, in a small town called St. Mary's. Yeah, St. Oh. Mary's. Yeah, yeah, by Stratford. Nice. We yeah. have friends moving to so. St. Mary's. Soon. Yeah. Oh, highly recommend for other people. Yes. Shame, <laughs> a, little, a little shameless plug here, but uh, Kathy and Kendra have a business together. Oh, so. That is true. <laughs> Oh my gosh, by our number one promoter, and this episode is sponsored we by... We should start no. the episode. Oh my gosh, yeah. 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 Not, not, not Blue Apron. Yeah. This is sponsored uh, by Poster Poster. It's Poster yeah. Poster. And what, so what do you do with nice. Poster Poster? Let's talk about it. What do you guys do? Um, let Poster Poster post your poster. Oh, I like it. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> So here's the thing. During a pandemic, <laughs> if you need some posters hung, we got it. You're all over it. Talk to these yeah, guys. That's right. yeah, yeah. Cool. The legends, the Kanikis. Who who are you really? Who are you? Well, well, I love that you already have your ad spot filled up in like the first ten minutes of. <laughs> <laughs> of yeah, anything podcast. else? Yeah. Rambl Ramblers basketball. Ramblers basketball. Ramblers basketball. <laughs> Ramblers basketball. Ramblers basketball. Yeah. I'll let you go first. Yeah. Um, so I'm Nicole. Um, I work at Western, and what is a fun thing to know about me? Um. Well, we're a basketball family, but. Um, I'm also a water baby. I grew up by the ocean and I love water. Water is my therapy. So cool. So how do you deal with living in London, Ontario? Because have like, even though it's uh, Sarnia and Sarnia is great, you know, living yeah. here, yeah. It, um, she, you know, in the summer, they just go to the beach all the time. So she just like, mm -hmm. she's like, that's the one thing with London. Yeah. yeah. Well, you all did introduce us to Bright's Grove, which is like our favorite place living here in Canada. It's been like our favorite place ever having discovered that. So Bright's Grove has been been awesome and then i kind of also made my husband get me a house with a pool yeah that was a fight <laughs> which is necessary but i was like i can't i'm a mermaid i need my water <laughs> <laughs> key, key key word there is she made me do it <laughs> well uh, we, you know we live near the thames too we live near the thames yeah, and that's very uh, true i would i always tell my kids so i i always tell my kids uh, like you can't go in there because you'll come out with like an extra arm or an extra leg or eye yeah, yeah. That, came yeah. Up, that came well up they with, won't come out at all that's right and that, <laughs> came up, that came up with levi this week um he brought it up as we like we were at spring bank or whatever and he brought it up like hey he was telling somebody else if you go in there you're gonna come out with an extra limb or whatever so, <laughs> so yeah. well this is gonna be fun i think we're gonna have a, a fun summer you know ho our hope with this is just to kind of this is like our little small group here yeah what's up with the spouses you forgot to you, oh, got, you no. forgot the spouse <laughs> terrible <host. laughs> Serge, okay. who, who are, are you, you Serge? Uh, who am I? That's a big question mark. You don't need to know about me. <laughs> <laughs> um, that, that's a good question. Who am I? Um, I like the way you ask the question. Not what do you do? Not, um, yeah, it's typically because when you meet somebody, when you meet people for the first time, usually the default is, what do you do? I never liked that question, by the way, just because I, I don't know. Some, Sometimes How do you think I like it, uh, man? Shallow. <laughs> <laughs> Try that, that intro. <laughs> I avoid these things at all costs. See, yeah, actually. I, I now in my head because uh, like I always have like five steps in my head, you know, like how can you start a conversation with somebody? Yeah. But I also know that if you ask somebody what they do, they're going to ask you back and I'm like, dang it. So I just like, what? anyways, can you, I'm not ashamed of yeah. what I do. Yeah, exactly. No, I, I get you because uh, a lot of times, I mean, unless you're, you're doing your dream job, uh, a lot of times, you know, that doesn't necessarily define who you are. 
uh, your job that is. But, um, you know, not to get too philosophical here, but uh, I guess who am I? I guess a different way of putting what I do is I'm a banker by day or bank techie rather、Beauty. by day. And by night, outside of work, I guess you could say I'm a basketball coach. I'm pas- passionate about coaching basketball. And、um, that's probably where I spend a lot of my time. Nice. So we'll leave it there. Cool. I'm so excited to. I'm so excited to meet you guys. I feel like I haven't really chatted with you before. I know.、Yeah. This is a weird、same. way to do it. But <laughs> <laughs> so nice to meet you. So you guys don't、so、know、nice. each other that well. I, I always forget. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Amazing. This yeah. is great. Yeah. Do you like, do you guys just want to talk and we'll just like listen it? No, I'm just joking. I know. <laughs> this is seriously. This is I do want to know about your houseplant. I love your houseplant behind you, by the way. I'm so into houseplants these days. I'd love to know what that one is. It is my so, pride and joy. It's probably, it's probably the best growing one in my small apartment. Yeah.、Um, but do I know what it is? I'd have to look, actually. Yeah. All、and it's one of those that kind of grows long, right? Like they, they kind of just keep、yeah. growing long, right? I love that. Yeah. I think when I moved it over here, it was maybe like this much, and it's been maybe、yeah. four months. And now look how long、Here's、she it, is. And it's getting it's and beautiful. It's, <laughs> it's going to get weekly camera time. So there you go. <laughs> Brilliant. There you、so. go. Yeah, I'll give you updates. We'll measure it every week. Yes, we, that's, that'll, can we make that a segment? I think we need, we got a sponsor and a segment already. If you thought, oh, I'm so ready. If you thought ratings were big for the MG chain,、uh, fan show, just yeah, wait. Yeah, just wait. yeah, just wait. We'll get two people watching this. Complete with plant babies. Oh, there you go. Well, we'll watch those grow over the next nine weeks. It's going to be so heartwarming. How's everybody hanging in with quarantine? Everybody、uh, staying strong, even though it's not really quarantine much anymore, but. Everybody doing all right at home? Yeah, pretty good. I think we've kind of like, you know, this is the new normal. We're in the new normal. I think this is already it. I don't think we're going into it. I think this is it. It's just going to evolve a little bit. But、um, yeah, I think we've kind of all settled. And the kids too are kind of like, yeah, I guess this is life. I think they may have even forgotten some of what life was like before. <laughs> Because、um, the way they speak and the way they plan now, as well, is kind of like around that. So, yeah. I think of JoJo, like JoJo's five.、Yeah. He has no, I think he thinks this is kind of normal. You know, like he's never experienced, he hasn't experienced life、yeah. yet. So, like, I have an, I'm, in a, I'm in a Zoom meeting with somebody who's like 85, and they're like, I've never seen this in my life ever. And then you got JoJo who's like, I, this, I think this is like the five year cycle of when we just like stay home for weeks on end. So, so <laughs> he has no clue. Yeah. So funny.、Um, how, anybody else? Everybody's doing all right? You guys hanging in there? Everybody's working、yeah. from home. All of us are、yeah. working from home. So we're、I、doing our part. Yeah, I didn't.、Um, when we bought a teeny tiny house a year ago, I didn't think we would be stuck in it 24 7. It feels <laughs> real small. But it's, your, house, your house is beautiful. <laughs> Thanks. Just, just small. Good thing you're But not. Kevin, we have a closet office. Yeah, I got a closet office. Yeah. <laughs> Now, can you work from the front porch? Because you guys got like the sickest front porch. You got a nice front porch too, Kendra. I remember from dropping、uh, the book、yeah. off. It's the front, front porch season. Do you, are you allowed to work、mm. out there? Yeah, yeah. I can work from anywhere. He's the I one mean, I can't. Like, I got to take、street. everything with me. Yeah. <laughs> Duck to the closet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay,、um, so uh, uh, the intro to Faith for Exiles. We're going to jump, we're kind of journeying and walking through some of the ideas. I just think it's、uh, really solid to give people the book, it gives some principles, and, but it's rooted in data of what people are doing. It's typically younger people, more, more、uh, those、uh, 18 to 29, but I think the principles apply in general to the things that they're doing that are making them flourish as disciples. And I know not everybody's into stats. I totally get it. And some of the teaching will unpack the stats on Sundays over the next little while. But what do you think? We talked about, Dad, on Sunday, we talked about digital Babylon. You know, this idea that in the Old Testament,、uh, exile was a concept for Israel as they were disoriented, lost everything. And Babylon was this archetype against God and his city from the beginning. Do you buy it? What do you guys think about this whole idea of digital Babylon? Do you think it's a,、uh, a good、uh, translation to our time and kind of what we're living in? Do you, do you think it plays? What do you think? 
Well, uh, I'd say absolutely. I mean, if you think about the amount of time that we spend on these devices, um, like on Zoom, you know, <laughs> yeah, like on Zoom, especially exactly. these days, Babylon Zoom, yeah. it's like interchangeable. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, outside of work, outside of uh, you know, just doing whatever you do for most of the day, you know, we spend a chunk of our time um, online, whether it's like scrolling through Instagram or. Or Facebook or whatnot. I mean, uh, Twitter, or whatever platform it is that uh, most people are on. Uh, yeah, we spend a lot of time online. We consume a lot of information. I mean, it's almost like information overload. Um, and then, never mind. I don't know the addictions that different people are, different people have. Whether it's like shopping for stuff online, or it's, I don't know, from. from that kind of stuff to the, to the bad stuff, you know. Um, yeah, I think uh, you can almost say that, uh, that that's probably true. Do you think it plays? What do you think, guys? I don't, I don't know. When I, when I think of Babylon, I think bad. And then I find myself trying to defend technology. Like, it's not all bad. I mean, yeah, we're addicted. But, like, it's good sometimes. Or, like, it can be an avenue for good. Um, I don't know if I'm just defensive of it because I don't want to believe that I'm so addicted mm. to it. Um, yeah. That's kind of why I ask. You, you, you have great self-control, Kathy. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think I do. I think that I'm just kind of like convincing myself. Like, I don't need it. It's just useful. Yeah. But I need it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's why I ask is because I, I'm kind of the same way. Uh, like, I hear studies on digital use or whatever. And then, you know, I justify, and I think some things are justifiable. I think the pendulum can always swing of being hard on every, hard, hard on everything. I think it needs to be exposed. Um, it was just interesting, the connection between Babylon and that kind of being the digital force that we live in. What do you think, Kendra? Anything come to mind? I think it rings true in as much as we consume culture or we engage with culture through digital in like in the digital world so it's hard like we're actually i guess i have friends who aren't on social media too so there's like a growing group that has rejected it um and like i'm not one of those friends like i'm not talking about a friend <laughs> I mean, like, they're with actual friends like i'm on social media <laughs> this is brought to you by poster poster and any of our friends we are not talking yeah. about you okay <laughs> This wasn't like a weird confession, but um, there's a reason for that too, that some people have chosen to not engage with that at all. And I think that speaks to some of the dangers of um, the digital world. It can't be all bad, of course. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But like, if, like, it depends on what we are talking about with, when we say Babylon. Sure. Hmm. Yeah, I th I think you make such a great point too. Like, uh, like looking at the parallels of like people who like totally disengage and do not, you know, do not want anything to do with kind of social media and that. And I'm sure, I mean, in those days as well, in the real Babylon, how many of the Jewish people just kind of completely rejected as well, um, you know, the Babylonian culture and did not want to immerse themselves and did not want to take on anything. And you just, you wonder, because I wonder too, for those who, who aren't connected in that way, um, you know, how connected do you feel to the world? Because our world has become such a digital, you know, like it's become all, of, it's where you get your news. It's where you keep in touch with other people. It's where you know what's going on in other people's lives. So when you see each other, I know for me, some people almost assume already that I know what's happening in their lives because they put it on social media. I haven't spoken to you in months. <laughs> but you know I've done this, you know I've changed my job, you know that I have a new relationship, kind of all, like, you know all this stuff about me already, right? Even though we haven't seen each other in months. So you think about those for, like, for people who aren't connected through social media. I, I, I wonder, I don't know, but I just, I wonder what that connectedness to the world is. Do we, and it doesn't even matter, you know, does it really matter? Oh, yeah, yeah there's like, I even a, think, uh, like, yeah, go ahead. Uh, no, go for it, uh, Kev. No, I was just I was just thinking like today being my birthday. It's just a matter of like think of how many times you look on Facebook and people are just like the amount of happy birthdays and you're like I didn't even know you were a friend of mine on Facebook. You know. Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> 
<laughs> Ouch. Heather does that to me all the time. Um, uh, you know, you become friends with face. Like, uh, she'll be like, who's this person? Your friend's on Facebook. And you're like, dang it. I have no idea. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's so funny. Yeah, I don't know if well, I well, I don't know if I said happy birthday on on Facebook, but happy birthday, <laughs> happy birthday. Serge. <laughs> what are you thinking? Well, uh, just to build on all of that, it's 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 interesting. So there's a a little uh, section in the book, um, I think under the spirit of Babylon in the beginning. It's got a, a nice little text that speaks a little bit about that, and it says the idea of digital colonization may seem extreme. But here's the point. Screens inform and connect, but they also distract and entertain. Through screens, ubiquitous presence, Babylon's pride, pride, power, prestige, and pleasure colonize our hearts and minds. Pop culture is a filter, and so on so on, and so forth. So, yeah, it speaks to what you were saying there, uh, Kendra. We consume culture through um, digital, uh, the digital media, and... Um, <clears throat> Yeah, so interesting stuff. Uh, but yet again, I think to your point, Kathy, you were saying that uh, you don't know if that really is Babylon because some people are some people are disconnected from it um, and don't necessarily and aren't necessarily consumed by it. So yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, I think one of the things um, you know we'll talk about this more over the next bunch of weeks is just um, nuance. This is a, a massive thing in the life. And they don't talk about it as much in the book, but we'll talk a little bit on, about it on Sundays, especially about cultural discernment when we talk about that. Um, how I think the, the best posture Jesus followers are the ones that live in the nuance. So these types of things, we've got to work to control them, the types of technologies that are addicting and controlling and can be even manipulating, that we use them appropriately. You know, even, even that lens as far as our following Jesus, I think is actually important. Um, you know, I, the reason why I sometimes ask the question is I, I get, it could maybe seem extreme to put the motif of Babylon on something like that. But at the other side is you see the growing need. And, and again, this book and this research was around 18 to 29 year olds. So all of us, how old are you? Can I ask you this publicly, Kathy? Sorry. How old are you? 29. 29. Are you? Yes, you're 29. How old are you, yeah. uh, Kendra? Is that all right? I'm just throwing you guys. Yeah, I just turned 30. Yes! <laughs> you guys are... You're close. You're closest. But like I find... Um, you, so I remember... So I started as a youth pastor when I was 21. I thought I was like super mature and old and realized I was just like a, a pup. Like I had no idea what I was doing. And it's so funny now because people would look and go, you're so young. But then that season goes so quick, you know, entering into my later 30s now, I'm realizing that there is a generation coming behind. As I've read the book and engaged the book, um, and as we take away these five principles over the next bunch of weeks, I also look at my own kids and, and the nuance of their lives where they know nothing but, right? So I remember telling the boys that I didn't have my first cell phone until I was 20. And they were like, because Judah's already lobbying for a cell phone for his birthday. Uh, he was in May. And uh, what was it as well? I remember when I told Ava one time, I was alive when there wasn't Netflix. And she just looked at me glazed. Like, what are you talking about? So sometimes the point with that is, is sometimes I realize I, you forget that we did live without optional te mm -hmm. technologies. We did live without some of us. We're right on that cusp. But there's a generation coming up where... I think actually Babylon probably is the right. Um, sometimes you need almost apocalyptic imagery to make the point, which is interesting. So, and it's 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 sorry. I was going to say too. It, it's coming at us. So to add to your point, I mean, first of all, you guys are young. You guys are like babies. <laughs> <laughs> How old are you, sir? Kendra. How old are you, Kendra? Kendra, <laughs> hi, Kathy and Kevin. Um, what, when's so, the big four zero? How old are you? Uh, I, I I had the big four all. It happened yeah. back back in November. So, <laughs> so that yeah. was two years ago, right? Was it two years ago? No, it just turned this past November. Don't add time, man. <laughs> <laughs> don't don't age me faster than than I than I want to. Uh, no, I just turned forty uh, back in November. Cool. Um, so I mean, lived in different eras. I can't believe I'm saying this, but. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I lived in different eras wow. when Jordan 
was winning championships. <laughs> <I know>. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, they, 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 the, the whole, like, the proverbial uh, LeBron versus Jordan debate. It's real. Uh, different eras. But, uh, no, like, these days, um, the it's coming out, I feel like it's coming at us fast and furious. Like, information and culture is so accessible that it, it's just flooding in whenever you want to like when you turn on google to just search for something you know you can easily get lost in there uh, by just looking at the home page because you've got a slew of information there uh, before you even get to what you're looking for uh, whereas before you kind of had a you know a filter without having sort of te- technology accessible um in back back in the day <laughs> you know uh you didn't have as much access to information um but uh yeah it's interesting these days it's, it's just coming at you fast and furious and uh, it's readily accessible which is which is interesting i've I've noticed uh, so my, the primary place I am, a lot of people aren't, but is Twitter for me just because of yeah. just the theological pastor circles. It's just there and then some of the news and sports media. And it, it's been a super interesting dynamic with everybody home. We're working from home, so a little bit of extra time, lots of opinions, everybody's bored. There's obviously deep political things happening as before we went on air. I think that's what the cool kids say. Before we went on air, we were talking a little bit. And obviously, you know, some of the things we've seen with the protests and racial things around North America and the world. And so it's very, very interesting to see how that's all culminating with very easy, easy voice, which in some ways is good, but it's interesting. I was talking to somebody today. I was talking to somebody today and I I was my father-in-law. Was it my father-in-law? I forget who it was. And we were talking about how when you wanted an you know, idea, <laughs> when you wanted an idea out uh, years ago, you would literally have to publish a book. That's what like, mm-hmm. you know, in the 80s, if you wanted your mm-hmm. ideas, you literally had to go through the hard work of getting a book out there. And so there's some beauty in like everybody has a voice. I think there's something beautiful about that, but there also can be something dangerous with how easy that voice can become. Mm-hmm. So very interesting. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like I think, and to add on to that, I think there was, there's a part in the book and the first chapter and I'll paraphrase it kind of where he says about like the ability to search online, people mistake for wisdom. So mm-hmm. like just because you're able to type into Google, something doesn't make you an expert. And I think that's such a huge thing. Now, you know, how many times do you have conversations where people are like, well, I, re- I listened to a podcast or I, 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 li- I, read a, I read a blog and now they know everything about it, right? And it's just, whereas you don't even have to work for it. And I think, I think the Babylon aspect is our reliance on, on technology. Like I was just, I'm thinking even back just a couple of weeks ago, we were, we've been doing some stuff around the outside of our house and we ended up cutting our, our, our internet cable outside, not even knowing. I it. heard this. And and we and we were we were so like freaked out without you know like it was I called I, I called and and a tech savvy was like you know it's going to be about twenty four to forty eight hours for somebody and I was like no that's not acceptable where you know like how ridiculous is that to be like okay so all I have to do is not watch Netflix tonight you know like but I was so much like no we are, there's a show we want to watch and we're gonna we want to watch it now right for it's sure. Just, well, Leonard Sweet, I remember there's this guy, he's like a cultural critic, uh, a, a kind of a futurist guy that kind of doesn't predict the future. That's not it. He's like a cultural critic. And 10 years ago, I sat in a thing where he talked about, this was uh, more than 10 years. I was at a conference. He's a Christian guy. He's talking about trends. And he said, um, the internet in a hotel will be a utility like water. And this was, everybody was like, no, come on, man. Come mm. like really, like this is 2002 or whatever. And, uh, would anybody here ever pay for Wi-Fi? Right, like there's yeah, it's it's almost. What do you do when you get in your hotel room? Yeah, connect to the Wi-Fi. Yep. Password. So it's kind of crazy yeah. how mm. uh, future forward kind of that was. Yeah, interesting stuff. I think you know one of the things we got to do is just like as the Jesus community is just. I learn again how to use these things. I think of COVID in the moment we're in. Everybody's online. There's a lot of oversaturation from the church, mm-hmm. and there's, I mean, there's some of that that's good. But even in our context, when this thing kind of, I know Nicole, you said we're in a new normal, and that's true. When things kind of progressively get to where they were before, they'll probably won't fully be like that. We've got to 
Uh, um, I think the old adage is, you know, eat the meat and spit out the bones. Like what can work? Like there's been some things actually with technology, even at Praxis, like the, the youth community right now is like on fire. And part of it is, is because um, those things are accessible to our kids where our leaders are connecting with the kids right in their homes. There's less pressure as a parent to like rush your kids in the midst of everything to a, a space, like maybe say every other or sort of every week. So, you know, we've been even throwing around ideas. Could we utilize the online platform once a month or whatever so that everybody, you know, can be there. So um, the book, uh, the main thing with the intro, and we're going to do two weeks of intro. So on Sunday, we laid the groundwork for Digital Babylon. We looked at these four groups. Then this coming Sunday, just in a couple of days, a few days here, we're going to look at uh, just Canada. Um, it's, it was Canada Day on Wednesday. We're just going to take some time and just look at the Canadian-specific uh, stats and some of the things and trends that are going on in our country. I know, again, everybody's not into that, but I, I hope we all can kind of listen with an attentive ear. But what do you guys think about the four groups? Um, it, it, so what the Barna did, they did 1,000 people in Canada. They pulled. The four groups are that they came up with are the prodigals. And prodigals are basically, so all of these are kids that grew up in the church. So anybody that was surveyed, all a thousand of them were brought up in the church. Um, and I think all of us, the unique thing about us is we were all raised in the church, weren't we? Which is uh, cool. Um, that wasn't even intentional. So there you go. Um, <laughs> thousand people pulled, 18 to 29. Um, the You have the prodigals, those who were once Christians, now like not followers of Jesus, no participation at all. Prodigal, you can kind of get the point. The next one is nomads. These uh, are the ones who are kind of like spiritual, but not religious. Uh, they believe, they still hold a bit of a foundational belief, but they don't necessarily, well, they don't belong to a community, a church and so forth. I'm paraphrasing here. The next group is habitual churchgoers. Those are people that like go to church, but their lives in the way they responded to some of the surveys, they look nothing kind of like the way of Jesus, like in, in a lot of the responses. And then the resilient disciples. Um, I know you read the book. Do you do you guys remember? I know you guys have engaged us a bit, and we talked on Sunday. Do you remember what the largest group was in Canada? Do you remember? The habitual church goers. No. Yeah. So it was actually the nomads, which I found. That's what I thought. If you were to put the four groups before oh, me, in Canada. it's right. in Canada. So in the book, so the book oh, that you yeah. have. I'm sorry. Yes, the book that you have is Americans. <laughs> so isn't that interesting though? Actually, talk about that. Because you guys, what is awesome about you guys is you have like a, a kid going into high school, which is awesome. So you'll have some awesome perspective. Because Crazy. You know what's going on. Talk to us about the South. Like that's not surprising, the habitual churchgoers being so high in the States. It's 38% in mm -hmm. the States. That resonate? Yeah, for sure. I mean, um, we lived in the States for... Um, eight years around about in Tennessee and in Kentucky. So um, the majority of the South is uh, Christian. And actually in the city that we lived in, um, it was Cleveland, Tennessee. It was uh, deemed to have had, I'm not sure even if this is factual, but apparently it was uh, the city with the most churches per capita. Per square mile. Per square mile in, the in, the, in the world. Um, mm -hmm. So, and 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 then you, when you drove around, it's actually true. You kind of get the sense of it because there's it seems to be a church at every every mm -hmm. five blocks. So, so yeah, it's part of the culture there uh, that um, everyone goes to church, and if you don't go to church, you're a sinner, you're a pagan. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, but know, there's a bit of a disconnect, right? Like from real yeah, life. Yeah, you've seen mm -hmm. that. There, there is. There is a disconnect, and uh, it's almost um, cultural uh, to be a Christian down there. Um, and, and, and so, yeah, and I, I think it's just uh, everyone gets indoctrinated into Christianity. Um, and, you know, it's, it's, as well as kids, as they come up, they almost have no choice but to be Christians, uh, which is a good thing and a bad thing. For sure. There's pros and cons to it. Uh, I think, cons, yeah, right? like the cultural piece. That's exactly what the habitual thing is. So that's only 22% in Canada, but that's 38. That's the major difference. You don't have the Canadian stats mm -hmm. in that book there, but we'll, we've talked mm -hmm. and we'll talk about them more. Kendra, does it surprise you that nomads, so these people who are spiritual but not religious, or those who believe but don't belong are the biggest group in Canada? You work in a, on a college campus. Is that, do you, I don't know, what do you, do you, what do you think about that? 
I feel like in my life, it should be a higher percentage even of those people. So that doesn't surprise me. I do find it interesting that it, like, it actually counts that as hasn't gone to church for six months or, or more. And I even know some Christians who that wouldn't be like a long time to take away from church. Mm. So it's a, so it's an interesting kind of measure. So just like grain of salt with that. And I was going to say, mm-hmm. um, I'm glad you brought that up because that is the one measure like that we're taking from the book, but that I don't like as much either. Uh, some the measurement for both yeah. nomads and habitual churchgoers were um, not at, as probably as good. So I jive with mm-hmm. that for sure. Yeah, a little bit sticky, but overall, I would say um, a lot of people that I would know, either their parents might I have identified at, as Christians sometime in the past, or um, maybe went to church like on holidays, very rarely as a kid. Um, more of my friends who are maybe older than I am have more church experience than friends who are my age or younger from the people I know. Um, but yeah, that does ring true. Yeah. Yeah. 40, so 47% for nomads. So prodigals in Canada are 22%, mm-hmm. nomads 47, habitual church goers, it goes down from the U.S. from 38 to 22. And then as far as resilient disciples, it's 9% in mm-hmm. Canada. What do you think about grouping people? <laughs> is that helpful? I mean, I've, I, it's funny because I'm not, I'm not like that a whole lot, but I've, I have found mm-hmm. it helpful in the descriptions. What do you guys think? <laughs> yeah. I, I, so so I, I'm a statistician. So for me, that actually works perfect. Like my world <laughs> is in boxes and being able to figure out the variables and I want to know what variables and how to group people. So, so actually for me, this is perfect. Like, I love it. Um, oh I group, I categorize my life. So I work in research um, and oh. I actually have a, yeah, I did my PhD in research methodology and measurement. So anything to do with measurement and measuring and, and doing surveys and how many peoples do this and things like that, that's kind of what I do, yeah. Or <laughs> what I have been Do you do that for time. Western, like institutional research? Yes. Yeah, so I do within gotcha. the institution. But I more support researchers these days, like in the job that I'm doing now. Um, I support them do their research. I don't do my own research anymore, but yeah. That's yeah, so, so, cool. so this is fun for me. Like I, lo- like I love being able to know this and how many. And then, because for me, I feel like if I have the numbers, then I can explain society and why society almost is. And I can start to kind of think about it. But I can see how numbers can be dangerous as well, because there can be lots of outliers that we don't, you know, that we kind of disregard. Um, And so, you know, kind of to the point of, is it six months? You know, like Kendra said, like she knows of individuals who may be considered, um, you know, nomads as well. But, you know, it's been like a year or, you know, kind of between the habitual and the nomads, you know, like it's it's kind of a fine line, you know, who draws that line and who makes that line. Um, and that's the dangerous thing about categorizing is, you know, who? Yeah. Like, where's the line? What is the line? Um, but yeah, I don't know. I think this is useful in being able to think through mm. people's concepts of their relationship with church almost. For sure. Um I was going to ask uh, just about that. So, do, Kendra, do you think that should be because that my my uh, original assumption was that it would it should probably be for the nomads longer than six months. Was that what you were thinking as far as that? Yeah, six, yeah that's what I that originally too for. I think the nomads and the habitual churchgoers, I think the habitual churchgoers yeah. once a month. I think yeah, in our context in Canada, you could probably be again, not to like this isn't a judgment thing, but you could be a habitual church goer and it could be more than once a month. And mm-hmm. you could probably still have fit into right. that group. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, it's yeah, and this is like this is also among people who have engaged with the church at all. And I think there's a growing body of people in Canada. I don't know about the states, maybe not, certainly not in the southern states, but a growing body of people in Canada who have no affiliation at all or engagement right. mm-hmm. with the church. Oh yeah, for so. sure. Yeah, another name for the nomads is duns. That's been a big thing in research over the last um, number of years. Is done. So done with religion, uh, uh, institutional religion. So there's still maybe a foundational belief. Mm-hmm. Maybe this idea. Uh, yes, um, I know the stories of the Bible. I believe in God. Whatever that means. And that can mean obviously mm-hmm. a plethora of things. Uh, but um, are kind of done again with uh, the, the institutional mm-hmm. side. For me, it wasn't oh, a surprise. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 
there's so um i wonder as well if if that kind of if things kind of, if this kind of changes things up a bit but i mean we also have more access to online church right so mm-hmm. when 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 people were polled about whether or not they were attending church you know how many of those individuals who said no i don't attend church because they don't attend church physically but yet they are online at a church and they may not be committed to that church but they're going to church essentially online but not actually going to church engaging so you wonder wondering? as well yeah, exactly yes. engaging so you wonder how skewed that can be as well and have more people maybe be like considered more so habitual church goers rather than nomads you know for that reason because and then do like I and, don't know. and to that point too uh you wonder how much this is gonna all just get blown up after the pandemic right after yeah. people have gotten used to <laughs> after Go to people have online. gotten used to like being on you know church on zoom and stuff yeah. i i imagine it's gonna change a lot yeah it's gonna be interesting to see see how you know how it all goes um mm-hmm. yeah when things kind of get back to normal will that will that consumption be more will the the one thing that has been noticeable at times and and uh churches that are large all the way to churches that are smaller have noticed um you know march 15th when this whole thing went down and it was like everybody's scrambling to at least do something with their community online to have a bit of a presence their engagement was really high because it was new and fresh and people were there and uh, it was kind of like everybody was scrambling um, that has from the big guy all the way down has been in decline a bit it's always interesting when things become more accessible um, mm-hmm. we can kind of take it for granted and that will be the one thing with um, uh, content coming into your home which I'm all for I'm a huge podcaster huge reader I'm I'm all I'm all about um, the independent learning, all that kind of stuff. I'm all for that. But it's also interesting how that will will be, um, even as things kind of get more and more accessible for us, sometimes it's easy to take it for granted. So there was a, there's actually a chart in the, in the first chapter there that, that uh, traced using screen time media for 15 to 23-year-olds, and the average was just under 3,000 hours. But then spiritual content for that same group was about, uh, about 10% of that. So one of the things with the, the Babylon picture is like, I think we all need to ask, like, who are we being formed by? What's forming us? I think that's the key question before us, just as far as time and energy and, you know, yeah, what, exactly. What's forming us? What's shaping us? Because where our time is, I think we need just to be, that needs to be in front of us for sure. Yeah, I think another, to, to add, I think another important thing is when it comes to, being online and viewing things like being church online, I think it just shows an importance of community, just being with other believers. Um, I don't know. Like, and yeah, I mean, I think a lot of people would argue just, you know, that they are, you know, they're strong Christians. Now don't step foot in a church. Don't aren't with other believers. Um, but they watch something online, you know, like I think of example of, you know, maybe I won't, throw them out because we're doing this online but uh pe- people that i know um that, we're not talking about like, friends some guy from a few years ago <laughs> um things like um <laughs> they would watch like televangelists in the 80s like jimmy swagger and all that kind of stuff and then you know and, it, and the big thing is you know it's my grandpa he's not gonna watch this but um he would talk about that and um he, he loved it like he loved that stuff I'm sending and, them the link you know, i'm sending yeah. them the link <laughs> Like the Crystal Cathedral and all that stuff. And, yeah. you know, the big thing was just a matter of like, yeah, that's great. You're getting some sort of, you know, um, uh, like the word and things like that. But you're not with other people to kind of to show an outpouring of that. And his always thing was just the fact that he enjoyed church. He just didn't like the people that attended the church. Mm-hmm. Right. So, I mean, I think that's just an important part to it as well as just the importance of community that. I think maybe these numbers would go up, not because it's just accessible, but because maybe they just don't like the other people that are going. I know some people... Go Keep, keep going, Kev. Keep going. Or was that you, Serge? Sorry, go. Yeah, yeah I was just going to say, that's such an interesting point because, um, yeah, very good. Because if the pandemic has taught us anything, um, is that we are commun- or we're people who are created to be in community. Uh, to be with other people, whether it's medically speaking, you know, the whole concept of, you know, herd immunity about how we're supposed to kind of uh, kind of build immunity um, 
when we're in groups and that we're, we're kind of you know that that's important for the survival of human nature uh, of humanity almost or boil, boiling down to um, just needing each other uh, needing other people the need to like pick up the phone and or get on FaceTime and you know communicate with other people um, it's it's interesting I think even more so yeah you can make the case that uh, hopefully going forward out of this pandemic that uh, <clears throat> people will feel the need to be together more well, yeah, I know, I know some like church communities, I've seen pastors and it's, it, I I feel a, even a draw to it a little bit, like a full on rebellion uh, uh, once everything gets back and the church can meet just to go offline for like, not forever, yeah. but just like <laughs> shut her down for a few months just to get back to reality. I just think it's funny. I'm not saying we're going to do that, but it's, uh, it's crossed my mind, you know, again, as things become so accessible. So it's always the... The balance. I feel like I'm less connected online in pandemic. Interesting. Which might be weird. No. Because, because I spend like yeah. seven or eight hours a day on the computer, like fully on the computer mm -hmm. for work. Then in my downtown, I, I said that kind of like a combination of downtown and no, downtown. <laughs> in my downtime, maybe downtown, um, I feel like I'm like itching for in person contact. So, like, I've seen mm -hmm. my family more now than ever because I can't see anybody else, yeah. but also just because now I like crave it. I'm like, mm -hmm. but I haven't seen you in seven days. And like, what am I going to do? Mm -hmm. Or like, I like phone calls more than FaceTime in the evening. And when I'm with people, I'm like, my phone is like not, not close to me mm -hmm. at all. And I've been posting less on social media. I like can't wait for George to get back to actual in person in a safe way. But yeah, mm -hmm. yeah I know of other people, same kind of experience. Yeah, because you're so connected during the day. I'm doing, didn't you guys do like a digital Sabbath where you turn it off for a day? I, I've always had this goal, but it, it just it never happens. Nobody, no pressure, no judgment. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but these are some of the practi practices. Um, uh, I think Andy Crouch wrote a book called The Tech Wise Family and he talks about one day a week, one, one day a week and then like one week a year, week a year. and then mm -hmm. he does like a month every few years or whatever or something so mm -hmm. and, and interesting i think that um you know we need to think strongly about these things just about uh what, what's shaping us what's forming us again i know some of the stats around young people but i feel like um this is stuff we can all learn from especially the resilient practices which we'll get into over the next little while are, are super good super helpful and i think things that we can all yeah, kind of, kind of cultivate and put into our lives to be helpful for down the road. I, I know, like, um, I think about my kids and the generation that's coming up in the church. Um, it's never too early to start thinking about, you know, raising that generation up. And because, you know, the we joke about, oh, we're getting old, but really we're not. And, and Praxis is a, a quite a young church. So, uh, you know, we, we joke, oh, my goodness, we're almost 40 or whatever. And uh, in reality, it's you're not even in your second half of life yet. So <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. Any other thoughts from the from the book or from the teaching? Anything? I don't know. Any? Any ideas, thoughts that the world needs to know? This this viewership, this the the multitudes. <laughs> I think it's going to be interesting. I'm looking forward to um, to to the chat, to this book. Um, I think it's so important. It's so relevant for right now. Like it's so timely as well um, to have these kinds of discussions because um, I think there are healthy discussions. You know again like you say we're so overloaded with information in our daily lives i'm overloaded with so many five ways to do this 10 ways to do this 15 ways to do this um so i'm looking forward to a you know like a great like to being able to delve into it with other people on 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 just um you know like what this looks like what you know this new life looks like what the digital age looks like and as christians you know what we're called to do how we're called to live and what is the i mean the bible doesn't talk about computers but um <laughs> i'm sure we can find so much um that you know that can be relevant and applicable to what we're going through in all of this right now so i'm looking forward to that i'm excited to delve into yeah. it and as a stats to, you know stats person this is proven yeah. like there is legit what i love about the, some of the stuff that barna has done is that and kinnaman and these guys are connected to barna is that this is like legitimate 
you know, polling, like, and, and surveying of where mm -hmm. people are and the things that are, are working. And I think it's obviously, I think, you know, the, the scriptures are timeless and true and lead us into truth. But there's the side, like you said, where it's, it's, uh, there's certain things in uh, the ancient world that obviously we're not there anymore. And we have our own challenges. They had their own challenges in their time. And I think it's important to be real. Uh, we'll close with this. It's interesting. Kinnaman, they talk about the, the formula is realism plus hope equals resilience. And the point is, there's a lot of realism, especially with people our age, you know, like mid, mid to late twenties to late thirties and so on. Sorry, Serge. Um, just joking. Um, <laughs> but there's a lot of, there's a, there's a lot of realism, but you know, realism on its own kind of breeds a lot of cynicism. But just a lot of people my age, like our ages in the church that are, are, are cynical. There's a difference by the way, between doubt and cynicism. Well, I'm all for doubt. I have my own doubts. Cynicism is like the judging of, one's motives or the church's motives and i feel like realism without hope it breeds cynicism um so we need to be real a lot of christians aren't real they don't want to talk about this uh, you want to put your head down and just kind of do our thing i think we need to actually like dive in and, and, and peer into this stuff but then there's also the hope side some people are so hopeful that they never are dig into the reality of the situation and what the these numbers do in some of uh, getting this feedback even canadian specific stuff which we'll talk about on sunday it's just good to have that before us so it's all good well we hit play you know, we already got a sponsor. We're gonna continue to watch. We're gonna, we're gonna continue to watch the plant grow in the back as our as our opening segment. Is there any like? I think we're doing all right. We didn't take a I didn't take a course in this and how to podcast, but uh, I think this went well and it's uh, it's been fun. You guys had fun. Has this been all right? Yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> so what we'll do is first of all, happy birthday. Let's let's roll the happy birthday music on the way out. All right. <laughs> you can't you can hear it right now. Thirty-two years old, Kev, and uh, we hope you guys can join us online on Sunday at ten thirty. And we'll be back right here. We're gonna drop this. We'll uh, dissect Sunday's teaching again. Again, it's gonna be Canadian specific. So we'll talk about some things next week and drop it on Thursday. Hopefully you can listen. You can find this on iTunes, Spotify, wherever you find stuff. And as well, the church is on all social platforms if you wanna follow along and uh, kind of journey with us. This is our little small small group from our, our little hub here to your earbuds. We hope you guys have an amazing week. We'll, we'll see you next week. Bye. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Yeah, bye. bye.